name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today it's another trying to fix video and in this one here I think it's going to be hopefully, well I hope it's an interesting one, part of me is worried that it's going to be just battery related but I'm hoping there might be something else wrong with it. So the reason I was looking for uh, this particular item on eBay, it wasn't this item I was looking for, there was something on TV a few weeks ago and it was about ET and I mentioned ET to, ET to my kids and basically even though I remember watching that movie with them when they were very young they didn't have a clue about it and I was kind of shocked because I thought ET I thought everybody knew who ET was I didn't realize it was only like the slightly older generation that knew what ET was so I thought to myself I'm gonna get something to do with ET to fix so here it is. It is apparently a talking book. Don't know how this works, never seen one of these before. But, oh, so you've got to dial something at the bottom of each page. Okay, well I think it's going to be quite interesting. So this was the listing on eBay. And as you can see, I paid, it wasn't cheap, I paid four ninety nine for it and £3.10p postage. So that's £8.09 altogether and it just says ET Phone Interactive Book 2002 not working for parts or repair. So that is actually quite late 2002 because I remember being in primary school when ET was out. It might have been the end of primary school, I'm not too sure, but it was definitely, I'm, I'm sure that movie was out in primary school, so I'm thinking that it would have been the kind of 19, the late 1980s when, uh, when E.T. was out, or mid to late 1980s, so uh, the very fact this came out in 2002 is kind of weird, because as far as I know they've never re-released E.T., so it's a kind of strange date to... Uh, for this to be released. Right, okay, and it just says here, E.T. extraterrestrial phone home Interactive book 2002 condition is used. Book is not working for parts or repair. Dispatch with raw mail, second uh, second class. So uh, yeah, it doesn't really say what's wrong with it, but let's have a look at it. Make sure it's not battery related, and even if it is battery related, I think it's going to be fun just to see exactly what it does. Okay, so this is where the uh, batteries go. It actually says on the inside cover here to order replacement batteries. There's a place in uh, Wisconsin. So uh, yeah, two sets of three replacement batteries plus a free screwdriver and a replacement screw will arrive four to six weeks. This offer is good only for US mailing addresses and they wanted five ninety nine, so near enough six dollars for that. Uh, it just tells you so it needs AG13, so it's got three 1.5 volts, so it equals 4.5 volts. So they're those little button cell batteries, you know, the ones that watches and stuff take. So uh, yeah, here we go. Call ET and hear about his adventures on Earth. Children learn numbers and practice telephone skills with this super-sized book. All right, let's uh, let's go straight to the batteries here and let's see. Well, oh, that looks well chewed up. So it's definitely been attempted to be opened. Let's uh, get a bit that's hopefully going to fit it. See, because these batteries are not really sort of standard battery. Well, they are standard batteries if you've got cell batteries. But, uh, ah, here we go. Yeah, look, that's just, that's corrosion there, isn't it? Can you see there? They're the sort of batteries a lot of people wouldn't have in the house. So now, uh, yeah, that's not that bad, actually. There is a bit of corrosion, but it's not awful. I wonder whether it's on the inside, and if it is on the inside, how on earth are you supposed to get into this? So we have some horrible little foam thing going on down here. Yeah, so it looks like it's possibly glued down onto the back of the book here. So it's not actually one of these things that's going to be easily, it's not going to be really repairable as such. You'd have to rip it open to, uh, I suppose, yeah, I suppose you could, you could start to pry it from here and then glue it back down afterwards, couldn't you? Well, I suppose before doing that and possibly ruining it, let's put some batteries in. Hopefully I've got some of these and let's see if it is working. They might just need to be cleaned up here. But although there is a bit of corrosion, it doesn't look to be on the actual prongs. So I'm thinking it should still be making a contact between there and there. Unless possibly it's this one here which is stopping the contact maybe. A little bit dirty there. Let's get some batteries. There you go, AG13, also LR44. So let's pop three of these out and let's see if uh, let's see if this is going to work. 
Right, so the positive side is up, so they're going to go in that way. Fingers crossed it won't work. Excellent, it's not working. Good, 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 good. I'm pleased with that. Right, so first things first, let's uh, scrape each of those ones, make sure it's making a good contact. Well, I suppose what we could do is, uh, how is this going to be wired up? They're the positives on top. So these are all positives, aren't they? Hold on. How's this wired up? So it goes between the positive, oh, and that's the negative. So is this going to be, these are in series then, aren't they? Positive to negative to positive. So these are in series, so it should, yeah, so it will be 4.5 uh, 4 volts. So would I be able to measure that between? There and there. That would tell me then if the uh, if it's just due to corrosion, wouldn't it? Three point five. So is that measuring just two of them? One point five there, two point five, three point five. Uh, <laughs> First of all, let's just check the batteries. So that's one point five nine, one point five nine. One point five nine. Okay, so the batteries are definitely okay. Let's give this a little bit of a little bit of a clean up, just a little bit of a scrape, and then uh, we'll try we'll try again. I'm wondering if the if it's the wires from here going into it, you know, where they're hinged. Unless that one's not sticking out enough, because we should have been getting the four point five volts, shouldn't we? Do you know what? I should be able to work this out. Let's pop one in. Because look, if we go between here and here, that has to then measure this particular one here. So it should be measuring 1.59, yeah? So let's go to, uh, that's gonna be the bottom one there. So let's do the positive here and the negative here. Okay, so 1.58, so that's definitely okay, that one there. So now when we pop this one in here, it then goes on to the then goes on to the positive, and that's the negative here. So this is the negative now here, isn't it? So if I go between here and here, it should be reading both of them, which it is 3.1. 3.1. And is it just not reading this last one? So when I put this last one in, that's going to be positive, and that's going to be negative here. So... Oh, it is reading it now, look. There you go, it's reading it. So it was just bad contacts. Do you know what it could also be rather than just a bad contacts? I'm wondering if this one here wasn't making a good connection. You see uh, this one, rather than it just being kind of corroded, it looks like it's bent in more than, for example, this one here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna ease that out just a tiny little bit. Just like that, yeah? Okay, so I think we found our I think we found our problem. So let's just give it a, a little final clean up. I might get a little bit of vinegar on that actually, some white vinegar. So I've got some white vinegar here. Reason we put white vinegar on is because these are alkaline batteries. If you have a look here, alkaline. So to neutralise that, we put a bit of an acid on it, and vinegar's an acid. So, but the thing is, this really isn't very bad at all. So it's. Uh, I'm sure it would be fine if we were just to clean it with IPA. Actually, you can see it fizzing up here on this one. So let's zoom right in on that, you can see. Can you see it's kind of gone fizzy? So I think that's it reacting. 
because on this one it's not doing it. But look at this one here. I'm just going to clean that up with IPA now. So isopropyl alcohol. So you can see it definitely took off some bits. Can you see there's like a bluish bit there and uh, also here as well, like greeny blue and also that end of the cotton bud there. So now what I'm going to do is, is ever there's a little bit of rust damage on this one here. The other two have actually come up pretty good. So I'm going to get a little bit of, uh, I can't remember what it's called, I think it's silicon grease just to put on there and hopefully that will kind of protect it and stop it from rusting in the future. So this stuff's good for waterproofing electrical stuff outside. You know if you had like uh, on your sky cables or your coaxial cables and stuff, if you put a little bit of this on then it stops it corroding. There you go. So I'm just going to put a little bit on the metal prongs. I'm just going to clean it off the plastic now. Right, let's pop the batteries back in and see now if we have 4.5 volts. There you go, 4.7. Right, so it should be working now. So let's pop that back in there. Let's pop the screw in. Ooh, still not doing anything. Okay, let's. Uh, is there an on and off this? Does it say. Dial a three digit phone number from this book to hear the phone ring. ET will tell you something. Do you have, maybe you have to lift the plastic thing off. Maybe there's something in that phone to actually make it work. So let's see now if anything's gonna actually happen. So let's lift this off. Dial one, two, three. No, so it's still not working. So we've got the correct voltage in there now, but still nothing's happening. 580. Oh. So it looks like we do have to take this apart. Okay. So we've got to now work out how this thing comes apart. So I'm thinking it is just glued. I can't see any kind of hidden little things here to, uh, you know, poke through to get to any screws. So I'm thinking it's just going to be glued. And I can see it's slightly lifted here. So, and here as well. So I think it's just going to be a case of prying it, prying it open. Yeah, I can see screws on the other side just there. I do have to take this off. Uh, I don't think. See. I could try and get IPA in there. I'm just worried that the IPA is then going to start actually affecting the book itself. Remember, it's just it's just cardboard, isn't it? Well, right, I might not need to break that end seal. If I just fold that over there, there we go. Now, is it just me or does that look a bit rusty up the top there? Just up here, or is that just sellotape? Not sure. Okay, well, now. So I'm not too bothered about this because I can hopefully be able to fix that up. I might even just use double sided sticky tape to get it back on. So I think once I take off all of these loose bits here, I think we can probably neaten that up okay. Right, so there's gonna be screws under, hidden underneath here. Must be down in each corner. Here we go. Okay, now 
what do we have here? So these are the connections here from the batteries. There, so they're all in. They travel up to the board here. And then we have this, uh, yeah, so this is the, you know, the membrane thing for all the buttons. And then it goes up to the speaker here. So, there's not much to this. So what could be wrong with it? Again, blob chip there, which is not good. Let's check for voltage from the batteries on the end of these wires here. Yeah, 4.7 volts. We definitely got 4.7 volts going into it. So now, uh, should we just go across the speaker? I know the wires are attached, but let's see if we're getting anything from the speaker. Here we are, 18 ohm. Okay, let's take this off here and see if anything becomes apparent underneath it. So this must be just a bar to hold down the ribbon cable contacts onto the actual circuit board. You know, instead of like them being soldered on or anything, they're just uh, it's just like a pressure fit. Okay. So what we got here, a couple of resistors, some of these ceramic capacitors and a transistor. Do you know what I've never understood about things like this is, so I presume the sound is gonna sound like ET coming from the speaker. So what is it, what, what is it in that chip that makes that sound? I don't, I just don't understand that. So these must be programmable because I presume the same circuit boards are probably used for all the different books as well. So do you have to kind of sort of plug in some machine and then do you, uh, do you save that information onto this little chip here? Is it just, is, is that it? And then, so for example, do you like solder wires onto certain pins or plug this into something to program? And you use the same circuit board for each thing? Well, annoyingly, it doesn't look like the wires are broken or anything. So, I don't think it's that. Now, could it be dirty contacts on the ribbon cable? Uh, well, they all look perfectly clean. So I don't think it's that either. Let's just put some force down on it. And uh, we shouldn't need to turn it on, it should always be on. In fact, we can take all this out, can't we? This is just held in with tapes, so then we can take it away from the actual book itself. So I'm gone from hoping it wasn't batteries to thinking this is not going to be fixable. Now I want to ideally take this speaker out. Mind you, they've kind of melted that in with the soldering iron, haven't they? I wonder, could it be speaker related? Uh, I suppose before we get too involved. So this is just a, this is just a thing here with the membrane going straight under that. Right, what I'm going to do to begin with is I'm just going to get another little speaker and plug that in and see if that makes any difference. So this down here is nothing to do with anything. There's no like magnet or anything on this to make the circuit. So this is purely just for uh, decoration. So it should be, as soon as we hit those buttons, it should start doing something. And I would have thought that it would have made a noise every time you press them. Do you know what I'm going to do actually before before doing that, any of that? I'm going to see if there's any reviews of this online or any videos of it because if, for example, you have to hit something first, you know, if there's some, because I haven't exactly gone through the book properly and read the back every bit of it. So I'm thinking every time you press something, it should sound like a phone, but maybe that's not the case. And uh, it will just help, I think it would help with the fault finding. As well as that, I'm going to see if I've got another speaker as well, just in case this speaker 
has got 40 because there does look, there's no water damage in here, but the screws definitely looked a little bit water damaged. But saying that, maybe it was when all the glue and all the binding of the books, maybe it was done with heat or something, and uh, maybe it was done with like steam that maybe rusted them from the very beginning because they're, they're definitely not in the post. They're only, they're only along the top bits of each screw. So it might not even be rust, it might be just uh, some sort of reaction with the glue. Well, I've had a look on YouTube and unbelievably I can't find any video on this. So I was typing in ET phone home book and stuff like that. And uh, this particular one is not here. They have like a, a modern, what looks like a modern version of it. Uh, but yeah, this one, this one wasn't here. Now I have got a, a speaker here. So let's unsolder these wires and let's test the speaker just with my multimeter. And then uh, just in case it's picking up the resistance from the other side. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that speaker, 16 ohms. So, uh, I have got a little speaker here. Just because it's so easy to do, I am just gonna tap the wires on here, just uh, just in case, but I'm, I'm certain this is not gonna make the difference. I won't solder it pop properly, I'll just tap them on. Okay, they're on there. Let's temporarily put this back on. Right, I'm going to try to put down all the pins together. Right, still nothing's happening. So I'm presuming each button will make a noise. Like I say, maybe you have to actually put in the code here to get it to liven up. So let's uh, let's just do that, two, four, six. No, nothing's happening there. I reckon if we do get it working, which I'm not so sure now, I reckon it will be a case of uh, every button will make a little beep. Well, let's pop these back onto here because I don't think that's anything to do with it at all. Okay, so it's not the speaker. I hope it's not gonna turn out to be this blob chip. So luckily for us, we've got very few components to actually test. It looks like we've got two ceramic capacitors, two resistors, and a transistor. So let's just go across the resistors. See if we get anything at all. These are in circuit now. Right, that is uh, 129 kilo ohms. Let's go on to this one here. 0.67 kilo ohms, so 673 ohms. Right, I think they're okay. I'm just gonna check just for shorts on the capacitors. Right, there's nothing on that one. No point in checking this one because it's already across the resistor anyway. Oh, is it not across the resistor? Maybe it's not across the resistor. But that is across the resistor. It's going through the same holes. Just gonna get my eye loop on that and see what's going on there. Yeah, it is going across the resistor. It's just incredibly crusty, the legs. There you go. Yeah, that's the same. Right, okay, transistor time. So let's zoom in, get a marking off this transistor, get a reading from the markings and uh, we can Google it. Let's move on up. Right, we're here. Oh. S8050. D218. So let's uh, let's see if that comes up on Google. Right. So that transistor is a NPN transistor. So we've got emitter, base, and collector. Now, if you notice, the base is in the middle. So that actually makes it really easy to test. So let's get our meter to diode test like that there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put the, uh, it's an NPN, so the positive's gonna be in the middle. So let's get the positive lead to the middle of the transistor, this middle one here. And now if I go to either leg, I should get a reading. So you can see there I've got a reading of 0.7. Now let's go to the other leg. Oh, I just heard the speaker go. Oh, ha <laughs> ha! It's because when I do diode tests, my leads are generating a bit of uh, electricity, aren't they? A bit of voltage. Right. Uh, Am I getting anything there? 
hold on one second. Right, 0 0.7. Ooh, could it be a faulty transistor? I am getting a read in there, but it's different. I think I need to take that out and test it out of circuit. It'd be nice to hear ET speak. Right, so it should be a uh, NPN, shouldn't it? Yeah, NPN. So let's put the positive in the middle. Yeah, I'm getting a read in there. Oh, I'm getting a read in there as well. Yeah, it's not the transistor. Right, let's pop these trans uh, capacitors out. Right, so these say 104 on them, so let's pop them on here and see what it reads. Right, it's a 97. It's climbing now, isn't it? So it's going to be 100 nanofarad. Let's go to the other side. Yeah, okay. Right, let's see if the others read in the same. I'm wondering, is it a problem with the uh, touch thing here? Okay, so they're using little carbon tracks there and here. When they touch each other, they will uh, connect. So if I peel a bit more off, I should be able to see what traces go where, shouldn't I? In fact, it shouldn't cause any damage by peeling this off. Right, so for example, if I was to hit number three there, then that should travel down to this end one here, and this big one here should travel to this one here, so I should have continuity between these two when I press the button, shouldn't I? So let's see if that's going to work or not. I've got to be so careful with these ones here because they break very easily. So it's uh, one, two, three, four. So pins one and pins four should have continuity when I hit three. Let's see if that's going to work or not. I don't appear to be getting anything there. Let's go further along here. Well, I've got my meter on it here and nothing's happening. Right, let's have a let's have another look. Let's take this off completely maybe.
this is it here. That's weird, on those massive ones here I'm not getting anything. If I am there... But not, not here. Right, could there be a break there maybe? Let's check the others. Right, well that is interesting, so look, on this one here and this one here I'm not getting anything. So let's try this one here now, this goes along to the third one, so let's try it here, see if I get a read in here. Yeah, I'll get a read in there, but nothing there, nothing, nothing, something. And the same on this one here, I get a read in this side but not this side. So it looks like I'm losing it along here. Now could that be the problem? You would think other buttons would work but maybe let's let's trace this. This is interesting now. So let's trace it from here. This feeds this button, this button, this button. It goes round here. It feeds this button, this button, this button. Carries on. Feeds this one and this one. So that's basically all of these and this and this. Now I bet you the other one feeds the rest. So which one was it now? Uh, this one here. So it feeds all the bottom ones, feeds this one, feeds this one, feeds this one, feeds this one. So that's everything. So it's like the grounds on the buttons are not working, so to speak. The two main ones. Okay, so now are they in contact with each other? Hold on now. So two of them are in contact with each other, but no. Not these ones here. That's weird, isn't it? That the that the main ones have both gone through this little bit here. How weird is that? I mean, what are the odds of that to have both the kind of main contacts go? Right. Okay. Could it be as simple as that? So, is there any way I can mimic these presses? If I was to go between one, two, three, if I was to go between four and, for example, one with my 
mind you, it's it's it's, it's measuring. It's not a, it's not a direct short, is it? Well, actually, let's. Uh, no, well, it's not going to be that, is it? It should be a direct short, shouldn't it? Because it's just carbon tracks. So let's go back onto here. Let's pop the batteries back in. So now, if uh, let me get my bearings back right again. So this was how was this connected? That was there. That was there like that. That was there. So we're talking about one, two, three, four, aren't we? Number four. No, sorry, that was there like this. So we got uh, the fourth one. So if I went between the first one and the fourth one, it should do something. All right, let's try that. I hope I don't blow anything up now. Fourth and first. Nothing. Why are you not doing anything? That makes sense, doesn't it? Fourth and first. Well, okay, let's go on to the big messages at the bottom. So that would be number one and number three. So between here and here. Oh, is it because I've got the capacitors out? Let's pop the capacitors back in. Right, okay, I've only just temporarily placed them back in. They're not in the, uh, you know, they're on the wrong side of the board and stuff. But now let's see if anything's going to happen. So that goes there. So if I went between. Uh, one and three down the bottom. You should now do something. One and three down the bottom. Right, here it goes. Oh! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes! Did you hear that? I just didn't have the batteries pushed fully in. That's it! Did you hear him? ET speaking! Oh, so happy! <laughs> two messages, I've got to press two! Okay, I don't know which two is. Let's, uh, let's go between these two, see what it does. Three, two, it works. This is the thing that's faulty. So basically the two main things that all the others connect to are faulty. So I'm just gonna sort of call them to the ground. I'm not saying they are the ground, but the two main rails here are not connecting to the others. So all of these are independent. So basically we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, sorry, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So there should be 13 things. So that means, including them two, there should be 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Right, 14. Uh, what did I get wrong there? So there's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, plus the two main rails. Ah, maybe these two are the same. Are they the same button? That goes off there. I'm going to get myself confused here now. Uh, one second now. So if we go between that and that, that should be number one. No, that's three. Okay, so where's number one? One's here. So it's that one there. One. Two. Three. Oh, hello. That's three. <laughs> this is so good. Right, four. 
I don't think I've ever had so much fun on a fix-it video. Uh, so that's four. Four goes to that one next to it. So it's going to be here. Four, five, five, six. So that's six. Five, now would seven... Five, so, so seven... So seven... St okay. Shut up! So seven... St seven still on this top rail here, so I need to go between here and here. Oh, that was eight. So where's... Was that seven then? One... One, two, three, four, five... Where's seven? That's seven there. Seven. So now we've got to move from here. No. Ah, maybe then. Hold on. Maybe then. Does it continue on from here down to here? Let's try that one. No. Four. Four. So that's the same as that, isn't it? Four. Uh, slightly confused why. We know we've got two main ones, yeah? And we know we've got nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen buttons here and two main ones. So why haven't we got 15 things down here instead of 14? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That to me is confusing. And I should be able to work it out, but for some reason I can't. I'm just going to wear... Uh, uh, just give me a few minutes off camera see if I can work this one out. Right, that honestly only took me a couple of minutes to work out. Yeah, it's straightforward. They've all got their own independent ones back here, apart from number three and zero. So if you have a look at zero here and three here, they're linked via this bottom one that goes up here and around. So basically, if this big rail here is connected to number four here, it will give a zero. If it's connected to num number whatever this one is here, it will give a zero. Give it, sorry. Give a three up here, I can't remember what I said now, but basically look, if it's connected to, if this big rail here is connected to this one here, it will give a zero, and if it's connected to this rail here, it will give a three. So it's sharing it. Quite why they did that, I don't know, because all of the others have their own independent ones go back. So why would they, uh, why would they do that? And if they did it on that one, I wonder why, I suppose they couldn't do it on the other ones, because then it would keep giving zeros, wouldn't it? Yeah, so it's kind of, uh, kind of clever. But it's only saving one, one rail, but I suppose it's a saving, isn't it? Right, so what we have to do now is we have to work out a way that we can get this to work. And I think the only way we're going to be doing it is by using silver paint. Because the thing is, I can't solder to this because this is just like a carbon track. I can scrape through this so easy. This reminds me of the Microvision, I think it was called the MB thing from 1979. And that thing, you only had to rub to remove the, the track of it. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to get some silver paint and I'm going to go between here where it's working and here and then I'm going to go between here and here and I'm hoping then that might bridge the gap. The weird thing is it looks absolutely perfect. You know what I mean? I can't see any breaking at all but the meter's showing a break. So and also it's not working is it? So uh, yeah really really weird though because when you visually inspect that that looks fine and you can see even with my little leads now just scraping on it can you see it's rubbing away the track so i'm not sure if this is actually going to work or not or actually do you know what i'm going to use instead i might use copper tape and then i might use the silver paint after that to, to actually get it onto the carbon track i hope that's going to work yeah let's get some copper tape out i need to find where that is well, I found it. I don't think... I'm not sure if I've actually ever used this in a fix-it video. I think I might have ages ago. So this is basically like slug tape. It's copper tape. It's really cheap. Do you know what I'm wondering? I'm wondering, rather than trying to bridge the gap... 
No, so I'm still going to have... Well, look, I don't have to worry about putting silver paint on this side, do I? Because I can actually put it right the way up to it, you know, like completely rerun the trace. It's just that there's a bit too much to run all the way around. That's not going to work. See, the problem with it is it's sticky on this side, so I'm not going to get any continuity on the sticky side, am I? Let's just check that. So on this top side, I will get continuity. Yeah, but on the sticky side, I'm not going to get it. Now nah, you see. Okay, well, I'm just going to try to cut it to size, and uh, yeah, let's see how we get along with it. So, do you see what I'm doing? I'm thinking about doing that, so then I can just put the paint between here and the track itself, and then the actual board can contact onto the copper. That's what I'm thinking about doing. You know, I was trying to cut it to size, but because it's so thin, you can just kind of fold it the way you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to redo this bottom one here and just uh, fold it right up until I get onto the thicker pad here. So you look, you can see that's going all the way to there now. So all I need to do is put a blob of paint between here and here, and I'm hoping that might work. Let's take this one off and do this one again. So it's obviously failed where it's gone across the sticky bit here. Right, there you go, you can see that that one's done there now as well. So let's just do a quick continuity on it. So the circuit board's going to go there, right the way down to there. So now I just somehow have to get that to stick on and conduct with the, uh, the black carbon. So I'm going to try and use the paint. I'm just a little bit I'm unsure if the paint's actually going to work. Let's see how conductive this stuff is. Yeah, not very. 77 ohms, so it's not even enough to make my meter beep. Look. Don't know if this is going to work, you know. So watch, if I go right next to each other. Okay, so it works there, but look, as I get further away, can you see there? I'm not even that far. 95 ohms. Yeah, I'm not too sure if this is actually going to do what it needs to do. Well what else can I do? There's no other there's nothing else I can do, is there? I'm just amazed it's gone. Just amazed it's broken. There must be just a, a hairline crack. Or unless the sticky thing's had some sort of reaction with the carbon. Because can you see it's sticky all the way around the edge here and across here? But across this bit here, it is going all the way round. Again, I'm slightly confused how it's just failed on the two on the two main ones. You'd think it would just fail on one. Why did it fail on both of them? Right, so I've got these silver paint syringes here. Let's just see if I can get a little blob out. I might put a contact on a couple of places to give it more chance of actually uh, sticking. More chance of working. This stuff only works, I think, when it's dry. Whoa, 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 too much. It's horrible to use this. Right, well you can see what I've done. I've just put a big splodge up here and a big splodge down here. So let's try to uh, dry that now. It takes a long time to dry. What I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to add some hot air to it just to get it to see if it will uh, dry a bit quicker. And when it dries it kind of goes a more chalky white colour and I think it's then that it becomes conductive. 
So I, I believe that there is some bits of silver in here which is, uh, which is doing the conducting. Unless there's some sort of substitute. Right, the lowest my hot air station will go to is 100 degrees Celsius. So I'm just uh, running that over here. But I can only hold it on for a, a few seconds each time because otherwise it will melt. I'm waiting for it to change colour to a more dry, chalky colour. Well, amazingly, I think that's dried. It's not coming off on my finger anymore. And if you have a look, can you see it's kind of gone a dry colour? Right, let's see now if that's going to conduct between here and here. Let's see if it's going to give us any reading at all. Right, so let's start on this one. And let's go here. Yes! Fantastic! It's given me a reading. Now let's do this one. And here. Oh, yes. Yes, it is. Right, let's just try that other one here. So that goes there. Yeah, that's it. It's worked. How long will it stay working for? I don't know. I wonder would it be worth putting a bit of captain tape over that or is that going to cause problems? Uh, mind you, I suppose, when it's tucked around there, is it ever going to move again? I suppose I could put, because these bits here are the bits, bits that are doing the contacting between here and here, not here. These are just a way of getting it, just the path it travels down. I'm going to put captain tape along there, and that might keep it in place. And I hope the captain tape doesn't react with it the same way as the sticky tape did. Oh, right, there we go. Look at that. I think that will last. Just give it one more test. Yep. And yes. Excellent. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the components back onto here properly because I just kind of just threw them on any old way and uh, neaten up the solder joints a bit and then we'll uh, put it back together and hopefully this thing will be working. So that is all soldered back on again and the components now on that side of the board there. So let's fully put this back together now. So can you see all the carbon bits that are on here? So that's the same material that these things are made out of. Is all back together there now let's just put the batteries back in see if it's still working if it is i can then close it up and start to clean it all right here we go oops all right let's see now if it's going to do anything yes oh yes yes i've got to wait for that This might take a while. So everything on this side is given like a saying, isn't it? Perfect. Message, 
Brilliant. I'm so happy with that. I really am. I thought at one stage I wasn't going to get that fixed. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I am going to screw it all back up and... Uh, yeah, and then clean it. It's sort of like stains and stuff just down here. So I'm just going to give it all a bit of a clean and uh, get rid of the dirt from up here as well. And then we should be finished. So that's it all screwed back up. I'm just going to take off some of the loose cardboard so I can then glue it back down again. Well, I'm actually quite happy with how that's gone back on. I think that is going to be okay. Well, I'm going to rub a wet wipe all over it now, make it nice and clean, and then we'll finish up by putting in some of the codes and seeing what it does. Well, the book has come out lovely and it's working fine. I would say that this is in very, very good condition here. So, faulty little pad there. And also, corrosion on the batteries. Remember, we weren't getting the full voltage coming out of the, the trio of batteries there. But uh, now it's all uh, doing what it needs to do. So I'm really happy with that one. Now I know the item's not going to be worth much and I know I've probably paid too much in the first place. You can probably pick up things like this from charity shops and car boot sales and stuff for probably 50p or one pound. So it's probably not worth anything more by me fixing it, but I really enjoyed that one there. To begin with, I thought it might be just a boring battery issue and although the batteries were corroded, that wasn't the fault. And I love faults like that where you have to try pinpointing different things, just working your way through it. I was sure it was a faulty transistor because of the readings it was giving me when it was in the uh, in the board there but then looking at the touch pad little thing going on there again I thought that that all looked perfect you would think it looked perfect there was no obvious sign of damage but then by using a multimeter you can see by working through it we then the multimeter doesn't lie it, it, it showed me two things that were not in contact with each other and all the others were as soon as we did that it started to work and as well as that it was nice just using the tweezers going across the different things to give you a bit more understanding of how it works I thoroughly enjoyed this one I hope I can edit it down to something that's a sensible length where people can watch it I appreciate a video like this is never really going to get many views but 
I think it's really, I, I love this one, honestly, I really, this is one of my favourite fixes, this one here, and I think that will be a lasting repair. Here is so an example of how the book actually works. I'm just going to read a couple of pages and put the codes in at the bottom of the page to show you what it does, and then we'll finish up the video. Make it more realistic. Elliot wonders where E.T. lives. E.T. shows Elliot that his home is far away in outer space. E.T. misses his home. I think a kid would love this book. Elliot's sister Gertie likes E.T. too. She plays dress up with their new friends. Looking good. One, four, seven. Hello, E.T. Look good. E.T. Pretty. Thank you. Goodbye. It's time for E.T. to go home. Elliot loves E.T. and E.T. loves Elliot. They say goodbye. And that's the end of E.T. Do you know what? They never made E.T. too, did they? I'm amazed at that because the first film was so successful. Right, well, there we have it. I loved fixing that one there. Really like it. My kids are too old for this now, but uh, that's a good book. I, I'm, I'm really happy I bought that one. Really, really happy. I've got plenty more Fix It videos. I've got an old camera. I think it's from the 1950s. So I think I'm going to do that any day now because it looks, uh, looks pretty special. And obviously something like that's going to be purely mechanical. So it's nice sometimes to get away from electrical stuff and try mechanical stuff. So that is it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. Bye now.